Understanding that you are elected representatives of the people, would you make the promise to the people that if a citizen makes a complaint about county and the county and its employees improper, illegal, or unlawful activity, that you will initiate an investigation of such activity and follow up on such an investigation until it is complete and follow and follow follow the facts no matter where they lead providing transparency about the results and consequences for county staff responsible. Okay, so that one's going to go to Michael. Well, good. I'm glad to get this question. I've had some experience with this. Um, I would certainly follow the <laughs> Follow the path all the way. Listen to what the, uh, the person has a problem. Listen to what he has to say. Find out from the county employee who, or whoever told him uh, about the problem, and um, do whatever I could to resolve the issue before it ended up in the courts. I think too many times I've seen um, the council is is unresponsive. Um, some people, some issues they have, if there's been a decision made by the employees, there's a 21 day time limit. Um, if you can't talk to the council and no one responds to you within 21 days, you have to appeal it to the courts if you want to go that route. Um, and then, uh, as I found out, once you appeal to the courts, then the council can't talk to you because they're in litigation, or you're in litigation. And so you end up with, you know, with nowhere to go. And I would, I would make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, with a citizen review board to review decisions before they get final uh, so that they don't have a chance to end up in court. And with uh, any, you know, in talks and discussion to find out the problem and where you differ and to make sure it's resolved before uh, the citizens end up in court. Okay. Well, yeah, thank you. Totally, citizens have got to have a right to appeal decisions or actions based on the county. And the council is the head of the organization. It's their duty and to express the values that the county organization is supposed to be expressing to the citizen. If we're having bad values expressed, then that is a council responsibility to fix that. So having a clear uh, appeal process, uh, plenty of time to make sure it actually gets worked out, I would actually force a response. Even if the response is saying, we got your complaint, we disagree, no further action. At least you have that feedback versus the timeout, and then what do I do other than taking the court? We need to get out of this you know, litigation mentality that we have. The county already is incurring way too many lawsuits. Again, hundreds of thousands of dollars being spent on these. Let's work our issues out, let's understand them, and let's solve them. Rick? Um. I, I too agree that uh, the goal of council is to work with citizens and help solve problems. And I do whatever I possibly can uh, until the point of litigation where um, if I go to the prosecuting attorney's office and they tell me I'm not allowed to speak to someone or don't speak on that topic, I have to follow the advice of a prosecuting attorney. Um, I'm hoping that um, there's a lot of cases that have happened to some folks that I may or may not agree with what happened from the county's perspective. but. They happened before I was in office. Um, I have tried my best to solve problems, and, and maybe I haven't done and answered every question right. Um, but I have tried and I have responded to, uh, I think, uh, and as, as best as I can to any question that's brought to me. You may not like my answer, but I've brought back what I thought my response was. I've done my best to help every citizen that I can. Okay. And, um, a lot of things that happened prior to me sitting on the council as well. But the things that we've done to try to resolve a lot of those issues is anytime someone feels there is something that is improperly, I want to hear about it. I want to make sure we follow through on it. We've changed out quite a bit of personnel so that hopefully we're offering better customer service and people won't have, the citizens won't have some of the problems they had run into in the past with the county. It is, we need to be transparent then we're tied our hands is when it gets to the litigation part of it. So I feel that we've been transparent. I, right now we've got a, another big uh, improper government action taking place, but it's been totally removed from our hands. But uh, you'll 
be reading about that one in the paper as well. So <laughs> sorry that happened too. Anybody else uh, know to follow? Up? Um, so yes, clearly, once you're in the, in the litigation, your hands are tied, your mouth is mummed, you know, and you can't speak. Uh, so that's why we need to avoid the litigation, right? We need to continue the dialogue to actually work it through and, and solve the problem. Um, we also have to be very careful that council members don't start interjecting themselves into staff activities. We got to follow the chain of command. There's a proper procedure to go through. Uh, we don't want council directing staff members to do any work. They've got to follow the, the chain of command and have to work through the county manager who works through his managers down the staff. That might sound a little burdensome, but there's a reason for that. It's called the charter, right? And we don't want elected officials going down and doing favors for their buddies by manipulating staff activities. So clear, clear appeal process, plenty of time to make sure we can try to work it out, a good dialogue before we get into litigation. Let's, keep, let's avoid the litigation. Maybe we make that the last resort and let's reduce the number. Anybody else? Michael? Uh, some time ago I proposed a citizen review board to review decisions made by the county before it got, you know, that would that would stay the 21 day period that you had to appeal it. And once you appeal it, it goes to the courts and then it's, it's uh, down the rabbit hole from there. But this review board would be made up of citizens, possibly from the uh, Builders Advisory Council. There's a similar uh, review board that's put out, uh, that's uh, recognized by the builders, uh, the Unified Buildings Code uh, for building permits, and it would be a similar to that where you could take a citizen could take his complaint, the county employee who made the decision could be there, no lawyers would be involved to sit down and talk about it to try and avoid the litigation. And I think that would save the county a lot of money, would restore trust in the county government, and that was one thing I would work to uh, to install. Oh, Mr. Swan, and to Bill's, to Bill's comment, um, I'm not quite sure what you're referring to, but in regards to me, I don't feel like I've done that. I feel like I work with the county manager, and it's part of the problem why we sometimes aren't able to answer questions as fast as we can, because we can't just walk in and go talk to someone, as he said, because the charter set set up. So while I've been in office, I don't feel that's any activity I've done. I've worked with the county manager uh, in conjunction with department heads uh, to work to get and solve problems. Anybody have a follow-up question here? Pardon me, question? I have a question. You know, four years ago I was here, I asked you guys why we're still approving building plans when they have legal architect. You did what Washington politicians do, I mean the other one. We'll look into that. I've come to two or three meetings. There's hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, engineer, <coughs> questioning the engineer stamp on a, on a building permit staff. We have a new director, Erica Shook, and she does not have the questions to ask back. It was got an engineer stamp on it. It's got the engineer stamp on it. All that they look for is to make sure that any county code that is, is carried over is onto the permits. So she has taken the approach of it's got a stamp, move forward. And it's not back to the other one where we used to have people in the building department question stamped building plans. They would come back and question them. If the engineer stamp on there, that engineer is taking responsibility. Well, the or, engineer and architect. Right. So, I mean, it does, it, either one that's got their stamp on it, it's their license that is involved. But to go back and look to make sure that they got some of the little quirks that San Juan County has on there, that's what they look for now, Harvey. Well, you still have a building inspector who shows up, and these building inspectors are sharp. So even if the county... Make sure that it's on paper before they go there because the builder can come back and say, I wouldn't wear that. Well, he should be. He's a builder. <laughs> sure. Um, I only have one question. Why does it take nine weeks to get a building permit through the county? Right. Here I don't understand. Four months. Anybody? The, uh, in the recent, since we approved the CAO, it's added another layer into the permitting process. We've added stormwater. Over the years, we keep adding 
layers and layers and layers of regulations. And each one of those layers of regulations has to go across another reviewer's desk. Is the stormwater right? You know, is this, how are you treating your stormwater? Is your grading plan correct? There's a lot of these other issues we keep adding on to the builder. It's not like the days in the 70s and 80s when you go in there with your building permit, show them what you're going to build, basic house plans, and get it stamped and approved it out of there in 10 days. The other issue we had was in the beginning we were getting caught up with our building permits but in July we changed the codes again and we don't have the staff to sit there and go through it. We looked at a new computer program that uh, I think that we've got to get some pricing on it but it is state of the art. If you wanted to get ready to put in your plans you could deliver them to the county digitally. Once they're in the digital format it'll move through quicker as well too. So we are looking at improvements technology wise to move plans through. So I'm not, uh, Michael, you go ahead. Well, I just have a short thing. I think that one of the big issues is just consistency with the reviewing the plans too. Um, and so that's, that's got to uh, get streamlined and you have to be consistent with building permits, you know, land use, so we don't have all these different issues going on. We just need to get, that's, a, that's been a big problem, is just consistency with uh, approving permits. So I agree, and this is, I think, um, Bill's taken us a little off of what Harvey's question was, but I agree that we need to utilize the stamp from the engineer and the architect um, to what Bob said. Uh, there's still gonna be, a, you're still gonna have to have a permit because you gotta have water availability and septic and all the yeah, other stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, we, I think eight to 10 weeks is a fair amount for uh, the average permit, it's standard in Skagit and Whatcom County. Uh, we do need to create separate small simple permit, uh, over the counter permit for small things like hot water heater or you know, small, I'm putting the deck in or some small kind of a program. Um, and I think like Bob mentioned, we're in the process of looking at uh, new software that will allow automation. We'll also, because of working with Rock Island and having the LTE, LTE interfaces we're going to have, our building inspectors are going to be able to uh, give you your permit while on site, so they're going to have real time connection. They can come out, do their inspection, print a thing, and here's your occupancy permit. Um, that technology will allow us to improve. And having an, I mean, we still have big stacks of permits. The fact that they're going to be digital, and it's a workflow plan where everyone who's got to touch the permit will see it go through the process. And that's something we've got in the budget for allocation for the next year. Uh, we also need to allocate an additional head. Part of the reason we've had a problem in. Um, in permit times is that the economy's gotten better and we're up significantly in the number of permit applications. I mean, there, was, there was a bump right before the critical area ordinance took over and that put us behind. Didn't have enough staffing so we need to, uh, we're going to give or I'm going to give um, our planning department requirement. What does it take to get it to eight to ten weeks consistently? And I think it's going to be either a brand new head or fill time so we have a contractor uh, that's on, on, on site or ready to go that someone goes on vacation, someone's sick, we can bring someone in to fill in the gaps. So yes, I think that over 10 weeks is not acceptable for permits, uh, but eight to 10 weeks are and we need to get there. And part of that's by investing in to where the money is coming <coughs> in and it's, there's new people building and, and we need to work with the development and make sure that we're consistent with it.